Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Phil from Vision Landscapes and based out of Montreal, Canada and the nice province of Quebec. I'm here as part of the Echo Means Business User Advisory Group and I'd like to talk to you today about something that is close to heart, something that um, has altered my career and it's about related to hedges as you can see here in the backyard, right? So uh, let me just take you back into my story a little bit and explain to you why I chose this topic to talk on today. So um, I opened my business in 2009 after having graduated from landscaping school and I do, did everything. So I grass cutting, uh, paving stones, hedge trimming and everything. And as my business grew around 2014, 2015, I really fell in love with hedge trimming and I wanted to do it full time. So I just started selling clients for the lawn mowing run. Um, really made that really small, boosted up the hedge trimming until a point where I could be self-sustaining only doing hedge trimming. And I just went super hard at it. And when I say full-time hedge trimming, I'm not even joking. That's, that's all I did. I would trim hedges 40 to 50 hours a week from early April until the end of October. It was it's literally all I did. And I quickly discovered that that was very, very taxing on my body. And I had to make some few lifestyle changes uh, in that regard regarding uh, whenever I was doing work because I was burning myself out. So I'll be going through my body actually from toes to head. And not going to talk as much about PPE today as I will be about um, wear and tear on the body and some changes that I have brought in my day-to-day -day activities in the past two years, especially now that we're also doing tree work, but that have helped me um, be more prepared for my daily activity in hedge trimming. So I don't consider hedge trimming as a, as a race, more of as a marathon and you have to be prepared uh, um, mentally, <laughs> physically, uh, to be able to get through your day because uh, it is very exhausting and you have to be alert. You're working at heights with sharp tools. Um, so you gotta be, like I said, mentally alert and also physically alert so you can get to work the next day without an injury. Um, I come from an area here in Canada where a lot of people have cedar hedges like this around their properties and there's dozens and dozens of companies that will uh, offer these kind of services and sadly every year we hear about either someone falling off a ladder and, 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 and getting severely injured or dying from cutting electrical wires um, or just having life altering surgeries in their shoulders from having done things too repetitively. So um, I've taken all these things to heart in the past in my, in my career ever since I started full time hedge trimming around 20 2014 um, to where we are today so let me um, start with my feet and I'll work up and uh, hope you guys enjoy my presentation this is more geared towards people that are going into hedge trimming full-time if this is like a side hustle for you or you do this only one or two days a week there might be some things you can take from this that will um, help you um, so let's get started um, whenever I first started hedge trimming, I used to have similar ladders like this, but they were more of an apple picking variety because the rungs were narrower and they were a tiny little bit lighter, only by maybe one or two pounds compared to this. They had rivets in them, whatever. Um, they were made just to be like a quick access ladder. But whenever I discovered this Japanese make of ladder, I said, wow, this is a fantastic ladder. It's welded. The rungs are deeper. Um, it starts in your feet. You're confident that's Confidence at height will start in your feet. If you're not stable what you're standing on, you're not gonna have a great time up there. You're gonna be uncomfortable. Uh, you're gonna be making mistakes. Uh, you don't have time whenever you're on top of a ladder to think, uh, is this thing gonna hold me up? So these Hasegawa Japanese ladders, fantastic. Deeper rungs. Um, that leads me to your footwear, okay? So these are chainsaw rated boots. They, you could have bigger boots. You could have um, running shoes. Many, diff many people even trim in Crocs. Um, foot fatigue is a real thing. If the, and that's why I like these ladders so much, they're wider, so your foot is less arcing over the rung of the ladder, uh, applying less pressure underneath the sole of your foot, making you less tired. That will be amplified as well whenever you have shoes on. Your shoes are not going to have a great arch support. So a boot like this that is really rigid, I can stand on it straight, I can stand on it sideways, I can stand on it backwards, and the sole of my foot is not flexing to match the ladder rung. Um, I have zero foot fatigue virtually right now. So yes, my boot is heavier. It's a little bit more laborsome going up and down the rungs. That's why I really like these Andrew boots. They are a, an arborist tree climbing boot. As you know, I do tree work as well. Right now in the past five years, we've incorporated tree work into our business. So it's an all-in-one boot. 
that is legal for our job sites and also very comfortable whenever you're going up and down a rung. So I'll gladly take that offset of heavier boots for many ups and downs to have more stability. Just for fun today, I did some of the trimming in two other pairs of footwear and man, I remember those days and I said, no, I'm, I'm putting on my boots is just so much more comfortable, so much more sturdy whenever you're up there. You also get great ankle support. Um, usually I trim in pants. Why is that? Is whenever you're up on these rungs on almost any ladder, you have to maintain three points of contact. So you're gonna have like two of your feet and one will be usually your shins or your hips up against these rungs. Um, some ladders are a bit different. These are my favorite ladders, but yeah, they do dig into your shins a little bit. So um, I usually wear pants and it won't like leave too many marks on your legs and, and hurt your shins in that regard. But um, whenever you're working at heights, it's important to maintain three points of contact. So like I said, one, two feet, third of the shins. So pants would help. I'm head trimming at home today, so it's not a requirement. And once again, I just wanted to experience a little bit on how I used to be working in the past, re-experience those pants to be able to uh, share with you guys here today. Um, as we move up our body, um, we have long sleeve shirts. This is more of like a, a personal choice. I like keeping the sun off my body, but we're really here today to speak about the physicalities of head trimming. And we can't go much further without talking about battery tools. Um, as you get into your upper bodies and you're holding a head trimmer, so this is a 10 pound head trimmer. This is almost a 15 pound head trimmer. You're holding these things all day long. Um, it really wears on your on your chest. It wears on your shoulders. It really wears on your traps. I think your traps are probably the, the muscle that is the most used most used in hedge trimming, and um, proper stretching will really really take care of that. But even uh, help you get through longer days. But even beyond all that, if you are using gas hedge trimmers, and I did that for many years. Um, there is a vibration that happens with those machines both in the head and in the engine right because it's a fuel powered engine and i would have shaking hand syndrome after just half an hour now this does happen with batteries still but it'll take like an hour and a half for example or maybe even two hours because there's a lot less vibrations there's no vibrations in the back only vibrations in the head so battery trimmers in this regard have really helped my wrists my wrists are not as shaky i don't feel like a tingling sensation in them as much anymore with the battery tools um, we could talk about fumes fumes there's no fumes of these um, battery powered head trimmers there's a lot less noise so oftentimes you can be trimming without having to have ear, prof ear protection on on your head um, you can just be a lot it's a lot more zen i guess you could say that's one word i do like to use um, Habit, habits, right? Let's talk about habits while head trimming. So um, everybody has a preferred side. Whenever I'm head trimming, let me just take a small one for this regard. Um, Scott from Australia, from Footprints Garden, says it best. He's like, you're gonna make more money trimming on one side of the hedges, like one side. Like, yeah, everyone can trim both both directions, but if we're all gonna have our preferred side where we're gonna make more money because we're gonna be more productive, right? So for me, it's this side. And whenever I was trimming, 10 hours a day for many, 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 many days, I literally could ask my wife, I'd come home and I'd have a set to my shoulders like this, just from like muscle formation. Um, my massager would tell me as well, they'd say you're completely like, what are you doing? Like you must be doing some repetitive movement that's completely um, not normal. And now that I'm doing tree work, that's one of the reasons why I went into tree work. It's like, I cannot keep on doing this like 50 hours of head trimming nonstop. I had to make some changes. So one of the changes I did is I'd force myself one day a week to trim the other direction. And it's less productive. Uh, you're not as good as it. It's a little harder. It's a little bit more awkward, but you would balance out your body. You'd be working the opposite muscles than what you'd always be doing. So uh, it's something that I had to learn. And as I started tree climbing in uh, 2020, uh, I, that was a full body workout. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, this is actually working every single one of these muscles I had been either um, under working or not paying as much attention to. So that really helped my core strength uh, and, and, and has helped me, I think, become a better head trimmer and not be as sore. Usually, like at least, uh, this is like 20, like 14 to 2020, um, before I got into tree work, like probably three or four times a year, my, my back would be completely seized up and I couldn't go to work the next day. You're not helping yourself, you can't go to work the next day. So some changes, like I said, I had to do was um, a lot more stretching, flipping the head trimmer around, even if it's less productive, and uh, 
now that I'm doing tree work, I think that's really taking care of a lot of things. You know, I'm not hedge trimming every day of the week. I may be only doing 15 hours instead of 50 hedge trimming. So I'll take that. Um, another great tool for the upper body that will save your back big time will be having a telescopic option on your hedge trimmer. Because if you're doing a wide hedge top, for example, you'll be trimming your top and then you can open up and you can adjust the telescopic unit and you can reach out a little bit further, but this action right here is what hurts the most. Whenever you're overextending yourself, you don't want to do that a lot. It's better to stop, take your ladder, go to the other side of the property, even if it takes a little bit longer, because it's that extended movement of a 15 pound hedge trimmer that'll destroy your traps. Um, that is how you, one gets injured. Um, these units, like I said, they're fantastic. Uh, like the old gas units didn't have this telescopic option. You'd have to like either have a separate unit that would have like a three foot extension in them, like the stills, or you would have to um, pop that extension on and off all the time, like really reducing your efficiency. I find personally, the most comfortable way of trimming hedges on top of the ladder is to have the right size ladder. If you can be up there with that hedge trimmer kind of trimming at your hips, without having to extend or lift up your arms, um, it's a lot less taxing on your body. So here, for example, I had a 12 foot ladder, but I'll be 100% honest, I took the 12 foot because I didn't want to take the 16 out of the truck um, because I just had a few feet of, of ladder that was a, of hedges a bit taller. But if I had the 16 foot, I would have just have been trimming the top at my hips, it would have been a lot more comfortable. Um, so that would be my recommendation is, get a ladder get many ladders I, I would highly recommend many ladders if you just have one you're not going to be able to do every single job as efficiently as you could as if you had multiple options people always ask me like hey phil what size ladder should i get if i said you only had one you should get a 12 uh, 12 footer but my best reply to that is how efficient do you want to be if they want to be, I want to make, be efficient, make a lot of money, great. We'll get an eight, a 12, and a 16. Get different varieties so that when you get to a job, you always have the right size ladder. You're always trimming at your ultimate ease and comfort zone, and you're never like overextending yourself. Injuries happen whenever you're overextending yourself, whenever you're reducing big seaters, you don't have a helmet on, stuff is plummeting down on your head. I mean, helmets are part of PPE. I didn't want to get too much into that today, but I just wanted to talk mostly like I told you about the wears and tears on the body. Um, I like using like a little backpack for water one, uh, just like a, like a, it's like one of those, um, what are they called, camelbacks. I fit two liters of water in them, they're fantastic for long days up in the heat. You're oftentimes baking in the sun, there's no trees around you, and it's a marathon. You have 100 feet, 200 feet of hedges to do, and you kind of stop and take a break on the ground every two minutes, you have to hydrate. Um, so having that water pack on my back able to drink at will is fantastic, it really, really keeps me going, especially up there there in the heat. Battery tools, as I mentioned, smarter, less vibration, less noise, no fumes. Um, having that option to be able to be telescopic really, really saves your soldiers. Make good decisions whenever you're approaching a hedge. Um, think about when are you coming back? If the client wants to come, wants you to come back every single year, maybe try to sell them on a reduction where you could reduce it down to a height that will be uh, easier to maintain in the future. There's many tips and tricks as you can do um, regarding that. But as far as every single day activity, hedge trimming, be careful about your body. You only have um, two eyes, you only have two arms, you only have ten fingers, unless you've already lost one. I, I haven't. But we're dealing, with, we're dealing with tools that will like take your finger off in a fraction of a second, right? So sometimes, sometimes I'm tempted as the blades are still running to go and make my adjustments, right? But like make trim, wait for stuff to stop, make your adjustments, keep on going. It's just a safer, safer thing to do. Um, I have a bad habit. I'm, I mean, probably too confident because I've been doing this for way too long. But be very careful with these machines because they were, they were not forgiving. They will cut your fingers right off. Uh, what else could I say about these things? Um, yeah, I would say invest in great equipment and don't, don't uh, take hedge trimming lightly. I come from a background as like a landscaper. I got into hedges and I got into trees, right? Tree guys don't really like to do hedges. That's a general consensus. And I find that like landscapers really should not be doing major, major hedges 
because it's, it's big risks. I feel like there's like the center group that there's, we're not, there's not talked about a lot. There's not a lot of training around hedge trimming. It's kind of like the arborists are well equipped and like, oh, they don't really want to do it. Or you have like the landscapers that see bigger money and then take unnecessary risks. So I'd say if you're serious about getting into hedge trimming, reach out to me. I'd love to help you and guide you towards getting really good equipment. Um, I mean, I've used aluminum scaffolding before. I've used, we have a sky, a sky lift, uh, an aerial lift as well. But if you are going about and you're starting off your business, invest in good, safe ladders. That will really make your day a lot easier. It starts in your feet, like I said, with a solid pair of work boots. You might think I'm funny saying that, but if you're climbing up and down these with running shoes, you're going to feel it and you're not going to be happy. Then it starts with good equipment. Having good battery equipment will um, make you focus a lot better. Whenever I was trimming, I'd come home, I could barely hear my family talking at supper when I was using gas tools. Um, I'd have like the, the gas fumes around my head all day. Holding that trimmer up there, sometimes you need to reach and you have that engine in your head, it's disgusting. Um, and like, I'm sure there's many other things that other people could chime in about, but long story short is, you gotta take care of your body in any single business that you do. Hedge trimming is like a marathon. Um, make smart decisions. And you know what they say, money grows on hedges. We're just trimming it. Peace out, gang.